So we've beaten Kaneshiro. Yes. We've got another new party member, uh, Makoto. So who wants to get and another party member? Me, 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 me. I, I do, I do, I do, I do. I do as well. Considering the fact that I still think she's probably the best party member in the game. Not, as... not, not even like... I'm not even talking waifu bait here. I'm just saying I think she's the best because she's a very good support. Especially at times when you don't even think she'd pop in, she would pop in for support. Thank God I had her for the very final boss fight. Because it made it really good. And of course, we're talking about the one. The only. Ali Baby. Ali. Yeah, Ali Baby. Ali Baby. Ali Baba. So, so after you beat Kaneshira, you end up discovering this uh, group on the internet, this hacking group. Medjed is uh, threatening you. Basically saying, like, hey, if the Phantom Thieves don't make themselves known and, you know, don't actually do something against us... We will, we will expose them yeah. for who they yeah. really are. Oh, no, no, they're, threat they're threatening to, uh... Because they don't know who the Phantom Thieves are. They're threatening to... Oh, I thought they knew who it was. No, they're threatening to, uh, target... Uh, Tokyo ATMs, banks, and shit. Just oh like, shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. Dealing, yeah. dealing everybody's money. I remember that. So obviously you need to stop them, but how? How are you? Yeah, I mean, how are you? You don't have to a stop face to a target. Med yeah, Medjed is an entire group. Yes, and you uh, get of, this of contact. Actors. You basically get contacted like this through the fan site, though, don't you? Uh. It could be through the fan site. This comes or either could, either naturally through a story just, or a fan site. It could straight up just be on the TV because around the time of Madarame, that's when, that's when the Phantom Thieves are starting to get picked up and be like, oh hey yeah, and when Kanashiro gets arrested and confesses his crimes, that's when everybody's starting to be like, oh yeah yeah yeah, Phantom Thieves are cool. Yeah, so that's when the Phantom Thieves start to get you know, more notoriety. Yeah. So I, I think it actually comes into a report on the news station that Medjet has declared war on the Phantom. Yeah. And obviously, um, there's you don't no, know. There's no way to really to do, do anything about it. Yeah. So but you in the meantime, a, while you're trying to contemplate how to do it, though, uh, you're you sitting at your the, hideout. And you get a text message from a person called Ali Baba, who we're going to call Ali Baby. Yeah, Ali Baby. And Ali Baby uh, knows who you are. They know you're the Phantom Thieves. And they know how you're they, the Righteous how, Joker. Yeah, how, how they know that, I'm not sure. But they want you to change somebody's heart. And unfortunately for Ali Baby, uh, they don't quite understand what you need to do to change somebody's heart yeah at first ali baby was being super vague about what they wanted so yeah it wasn't ali even clear how to do what she wanted just for yeah. the fact that she didn't i guess know how to talk to people because that's yeah, how it actually ali ends up looking like yeah ali ba ali baby was literally just like hey why aren't you acting i told you i need somebody's heart changed and eventually it gets to the point like, uh, we need a name. And it's like, why do you need a name? Uh, it's just how we operate, okay? Okay, fine. Here's the name, Futaba Sakura. Uh, and then you and then you think to yourself, Sak. Not only do you think to yourself, but the game thinks to itself, Sakura. Wait a minute. That's, That's Sojiro's last, last name. Oh my god. Could there, be, could there be a connection? And then you ask Sojiro and he gets in your face like, You shut the fuck up now, you little piece of shit. Don't ever ask that around here again or I'll kill how, you. How do you know about that? I'm not confirming anything. But then Prosecutor Sai Nijima, Makoto Nijima's older sister, comes into LeBlanc. And you just happen to come in with no planning whatsoever about it. You happen to come in and you overhear uh, 
the words Futaba here. Sakura come out of Sai's stupid adult mouth. And uh, also, she th kind of threatens uh, Sojiro with, with legal take, actions. With legal action. And then you're like, okay, we got to get to the bottom of this because I don't think Sojiro is the kind of guy to like, to like, abuses abuse his daughter he can't be a bad guy mason well no he can't he can't be a not. bad guy because he's taking care of us how are we gonna take care yeah. of ourselves if we don't have someone to take care of us yeah so eventually you guys get the bright idea to just break into sojiro's house <laughs> because um you figure out that ali baby is actually futaba herself Yes, and she upon this will... comes the weirdest moment in the game where I'm like, somehow I don't know how Makoto could or could not have been the main love interest because it sure shows here. Yeah, every, perso every Persona game has that, has maybe that one moment where it's like, this is the one we really want you to go after. Except 4. 4 was like, we're going to shove this in your face and you're going to like it. Yeah. And I didn't like it. I way. know you don't like it, but I like it. I don't. I don't hate Reese, but like, God I love Reese. She's you're just, so adorable. You, you're literally just shoving this down my throat. Like, I will say this though. I don't have a choice. Kasumi says the word senpai eight hundred more times than Reese says it. Yeah, but she's cuter about it. Uh... Look, look, Laura. Look, I love Laura Bailey as a voice actress and that's all i'll say because... but did it ever once occur to her to shut the fuck up from saying senpai one more time <laughs> laura bailey's not laura bailey's not um, um i i know I'm, 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 yeah she's Rise. i know i'm being facetious okay i was just making i thought sure. you were talking about Rise anyways i was talking about Rise. <laughs> why why did kasumi come up there I don't know why Kasumi went up there. God, that's still the one thing I still can't stand about her. Otherwise, she's fine. Look, I'll admit, she does say senpai a lot, but I didn't think it was that annoying. I think Most... the only reason I think you think Rise is annoying with the senpai thing is because of Persona 4, Arena Ultimax. Because that's like every word out of her mouth. They really want her to say that a lot. I thought she was annoying in Persona 4. I, would, I thought she was annoying I would, when I actually played the game. I thought you would think she's more annoying in Arena, because she, that's like, every time she wins a match especially, she's like, senpai, 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 senpai. I mean, there's also there's also that. That really didn't help the character. Like, we get it. You like Narukami. Can you shut the fuck up about him, please? But that that's... That's the one time, though, where it's so obvious that I would personally think that the main crush for the for the main character to have been more obvious than in 5. But I still think 5 does it a little more subtly, though, than 4. 5 does it a little more. Vanilla 5 does it a little, a little more subtly. Uh, because, again, there's just the one, there's just the one scene that really tells you that... Yeah, Mak Makoto's kind of the one that we're like, yeah, we're nudge nudge, go over to Makoto, please. <clears throat> now, granted, I don't but, care too much for Makoto. I said earlier, but I still think that she probably is the actual main one that Mama Mia probably wants, and would well, probably actually have I went think, with. I think I think Royal, um, I think Royal, despite the love I have for the character. I think Royal has a Rise problem with Kasumi. Oh yeah, I now that I you say find... that, I do think that, but we'll have to get to that way later. Yeah, because that's um, actually going into social link with her. Yeah, for the uh, most part. So, but back to Futaba. You break into Sojiro's house, and then the power goes out, and then Makoto and, Makoto and Futaba Makoto like wets her vagina. And grabs a hold of your legs oh and your dick at the same oh. time, and oh she's like, God. "Help me, please!" And she starts yeah. crying, and it's all cute and stuff. And it's like, 
please stop. I mean, it, I mean, it honestly is kind of a cute scene. It is, but even then, it's it's just like please, you you punch a fucking dude sitting on a toilet in his nutsack. Why are you afraid of this? Well, she's a kid, remember? But yet she's not afraid to punch Belphegor in the nutsack while he's sitting on the toilet. Maybe real life scares her more than <laughs> our metaverse. Man, that that's where I'm like, man, these kids are kind of fucked. <laughs> so ult- ultimately, Futaba can't understand why you're not able to change her heart. And you need to figure out you you end up because she came to you specifically you kind of let her in on the whole thing and you're like look we can't change we can't do anything about it until we we discover what your palace is and what you view this place as yeah and we end up finding out she views Sojiro Sakura's house, which is her palace, is Sojiro's house. She views it as her tomb. And it's very, it is honestly very sad. Yes. Because, um, should we get, should we get into this now or wait a little bit until near the end of the palace? Um, what do you mean? Try to, Uh, try to clarify if possible. The sad part. Futa- why Futaba thinks it's her tomb. Oh. Um, I guess we can go to explain it now. So, Futaba saw her mother die right in front of her eyes. Yes, she got ran over by a car. Yes, and <clears throat> the adult, and the adults at her will, at her, I, I guess her, like, will reading I would assume. Basically, I don't think it was ever properly explained what was going on at that particular time. I would assume it was at the uh, what? the guys in the black suits basically said it's Futaba's fault that her mom jumped in front of a car and decided to yeah, kill and, herself. And like you think about this, not just in a fictional video game world, where again it's fictional, and you think about that in the real world and you think who the fuck would say that to a kid yeah no shit i don't i don't care if you're the biggest child hating motherfucker in the world this kid who's probably at this point what i think she was i think it, it's not it's not implied kid. on the she age did. but i think she was 12 or maybe 10 yeah and plus she and plus she was also kind of socially awkward not only so, not only that, she, but I think at this point in the story, she is sixteen or seventeen. I think she's she's either fifteen or sixteen. I think she's, she's not seventeen. Six, she's, she's not seventeen. Most likely so, sixteen, then I would say. No, I think she's fifteen because she, uh, she's going to start her first year of high school. That's a spoiler, believe, you fucker. Yes, a very minor spoiler. I apologize. I believe she's 15 because Joker and Ryuji and Yusuke are 16 and the third years are 7. It didn't even say what year she was. Matter of fact, when she ended up going anyway, since we've already talked about it, we might as well talk about it in length. It doesn't say yeah. what year she is anyways. So that could help us clarify a hair more, but I'm pretty sure she's 16. To the wiki I go. That I'm sure it won't give you a definitive age there either. It'll it it more than likely will I guess. Because whenever it. every time I see someone arguing, because it seems like the main two arguments for who's the best girl in Persona Five, and everyone's either saying Makoto or Futaba, those are the main two that I always see argued, and everyone that argues Makoto is well Futaba's the little sister, and I'm like, you make it sound like she's ten. <laughs> okay. Um. First of all. First of all, the wiki actually gives a definitive date of birth. Really? Yeah, so around this time, this is what, June, July? Uh, something like that. It's in the summer. 
Yeah, uh, she's 15. Really? Around at this at this point in time in the game, she's 15 because her birthday is February 15th, circa 2001. <laughs> so she's 15 years old. And so, you know, this might again. We'll we'll just assume and we'll just say, ten ten years old. Ten years old. Yeah. Who's who? Who? Who the fuck says? Oh, it's your fault that your mother died. You're the reason. You killed your mother. You're the reason that your mom collapsed and died and got ran over by a car. Yeah. Who says that? Very, very shitty adults. It's it it, it is it is something that like I, I get it again I get it you know it's fiction it's a video game. But that in particular is is, is something that really did kind of upset me when I started thinking more about it. I'm like, what the fuck? I know it 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 does suck though, and it kind of gets worse from there. Um, she en she ends up getting the further you get in her palace, uh, the more the worse the... she ends up getting. However, yeah. the worse that it gets is if you don't complete her assignment, her palace. I have never done that. And I've did. never failed on the I've... dates ever in any of the Persona games I... that I've played. But I don't even want to look it up, honestly. The <laughs> English one, I. I don't even honestly remember what happens in the English one. I just remember the Japanese one because it's the worst. In the Japanese one, she will commit suicide if you don't complete it in time. Yeah. And yeah, that's that, some uh, dark shit. Yeah. It, I don't remember what it is in the English version, though. Let me see what it you is. You know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same thing. It's not, though. They, they changed the translation to it. Uh, whoops. I can understand because like a kid committing suicide that's a little that's a little dark for uh, the USA for the western audience. If you fail Futaba's palace, it's heavily implied that she commits suicide as she can't take the pain anymore. You get arrested thanks to the fake midget and on suspicion on being a phantom thief and Sojiro is arrested as an accomplice. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, so it, it's it's awful. like the worst of the worst happened. That it, I didn't even do it, and that makes me feel awful. Fuck. I I don't I don't I don't really want to have the fail state anyways, but I'm always interested to see what it is. Just reading about it, because reading about it, it's impactful. But having but having that it happen one, on screen, especially that one, it's like that's. I would honestly, sad. Like, if that if that kind of thing honestly happened to me, whether by, on purpose or accident, I would probably cry. Yeah, <laughs> I like I, yeah, I won't even dispute that. Now I can maybe see you, uh, having the fail state for. A palace at the end date if you're playing on a very harder difficulty like merciless but the only the only one genuinely thought about doing a fa doing a fail state for was the very final one in royal oh I didn't yeah do i didn't do it but i thought about doing it i was like i want to I, I wonder what happens and then i'm like ah, ah i've gone too far i gotta keep going <laughs> yeah um, but I so, guess back to Futaba. Yeah. So Futaba. basically, basically Futaba through the whole palace is a mess, but at yeah. first everything's fine. Yeah, her her shadow's actually welcoming for once. Yeah, her at first you're not even shadows, you're not even seen as a threat from her as her shadow, from her yeah. shadow by her shadow. Yeah, your shadow, her shadow's just like welcome. Welcome now, fucks. Now get out. Pillage. Yeah. But if you can find this thing that was stolen from this pyramid uh, in the village, uh, I will help you out. And she didn't really help, actually. She tried to kill us. Yeah, she tried to kill you. 
But and I remember, uh, I remember the item you bring back. It's a pineapple. <laughs> it's a fucking pineapple. Obviously, a pineapple of vital. Importance. Even Ryuji's like, why the fuck do we have to bring this back? <laughs> a, 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 vital, a vitally important pineapple, obviously. Yes. Maybe we'll find out who lives under the sea. But going, progressing into the palace, uh, this one is, I'd say this one probably has uh, one of my favorite uh, jazzy tunes in the game, for sure. The days when my mother was there. Yes, the days when my mother and, was there. Just, just the name of that song is <clears> just like, like you, you listen to the song, and it's a little, it's a little sad sounding, and you're like, oh, okay, well, I mean, I guess it makes sense, considering you know Futaba and the palace, and then you realize the name of the song is the days when my mother was there, and then you're like, oh, which would make sense because the palace is all about her mother and her, yeah. of course, but yeah. it's it's mostly um, about like her mother for the most part. But out out in the real out in the real world. Uh, throughout the palace uh she's just getting worse and it's kind of heart-wrenching to see because she suffers through uh auditory hallucination oh yeah she'll, yeah she'll kind of like a schizophrenic basically yeah she'll constantly just hear and, and voices basically it, it, it's even worse because it's even worse because like so she can just be sitting at her computer because she is what I believe in Japan they would call it a N E E T. I don't remember what that stands for. Shut in. <laughs> yeah, a, a shut. Uh, basically, a shut in. Um, and she can be just typing away at her computer, and in fact, this is how it happens in one scene. She goes, "Hmm," and she's working, and then she's like, "Oh no." It's and, happening again. And then the voices come in. Yeah, and it's like, you killed her! It's, she, it, it's just like... It's pretty it, bad. It makes, makes, it makes me sad. It really does make me sad. Yeah, her her palace is... That's that's why I said, I think, I think her palace is where the game changes completely. 100% where the yeah. game finally starts to pick up because you're hitting heavy, like... Shiho was probably the most heaviest thing. I don't. Shiho I don't was, think the other two were nearly as heavy as uh, Kamoshida's was for the most part, no, just because of Shiho. No, no, they weren't. But but really, it just it, it goes from we need to stop. Uh, we need to stop uh, criminals. <laughs> criminals, and, you know, shitty adults. To and Palace Four just turns. Out, we need to save somebody's life. Yep. And it's just like, oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, basically, uh, going through Futaba's palace, it's got a lot of intricate puzzles with it. Um, w I guess we can go ahead and start actually discussing the palace now, since we've done the whole yeah. go to the town it's, and get the pineapple. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty good. Um, it's a pretty good. <laughs> it's just a really big and big pyramid with lots of different doors and lots of different rooms yeah and lots of traps too yeah lots of traps uh, i think this i think this in vanilla is if you were able to get past madarame i think this palace is where the difficulty spikes up yeah i remember in vanilla this is actually the first palace i died in matter of fact i think it was to the uh uh the uh angel persona and I think that I would I would say that considering the considering how easy you know Royal felt throughout the entire thing, I would say that this palace in Royal was also where the difficulty amped up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it was as as hard as Vanilla was, but I I would definitely say that Royal was easy. But even then, like I didn't feel the difficulty for this palace as much. But it 
But it was, I was it aware was because of there. how much I died the first set of times. Because I think I died maybe once or twice in my or my original run in vanilla. Just to Angel, yeah. I'm pretty sure. It was the persona where her eyes are covered up and her tits and like vagina or whatever are all covered in tape. Yeah, that's Angel. Uh, because she kept using uh, Moodoon and I was stupid enough to not use a persona that blocked Curse. Why the fuck would Angel know Moodoon? Maybe it wasn't that one. Maybe it was the Bless Instant Kill. Yeah, Angel would know Hamon. Yeah, Hamon. So I never had any persona that blocked Bless. Because I was regardless, a dumbass. Re regardless of whatever instant kill uh, spell Angel knew, um, I feel like for me personally, Futaba's Palace is where I remembered, again, the difficulty ramped up, so I started being a little bit more careful going through the game. Uh, going through Royal, I'm like, I just don't want to get caught off guard by anything again. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to, you know, try to figure everything out. Make sure that I'm not just going gung-ho crazy. Because, um, again, Persona 5 Royal was easier than Vanilla. Is it because we played Persona 5 before playing Royal? Probably. More than likely, yeah. Not only but, that, but we've we've both also played. We've had well, you've played both versions of four, but then again, four four. I have You came after Royal. Dude, you dude, played after I only. Royal. Dude, I haven't even finished gold. I haven't even gotten past the first dungeon. Gold. Oh, I thought you said you beat it. No, no, I've beaten vanilla four. I knew that. I started, you beat that I ages ago. Up gold. I started up gold, and I just haven't played it. In a, in a while I have it on my Vita because this was before it got ported to PC yeah um, I've beaten uh, 3 and I've beaten Persona 3 FES and Persona 4 Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal uh, so I'm fairly I'm fairly versed in how modern Persona game games go so maybe that, that helped uh, how Royal felt but I mean, I'm not gonna say Roy. I'm not gonna say Royal is an easy game. Because uh, especially it's if it's your first Persona game and you don't play it on easy or anything lower, you're probably gonna be caught off guard quite often. Yeah, it's it's an at. Well, there there were times where I'm I'm sure you can say, and I know I can say, there were times even in Royal where we might have been caught off guard. Sometimes, I I certainly did die a couple times. Um, I started dying in Palace 5. Fuck that boss. <laughs> I mean, you may not have died to him, but come on, you gotta admit that. I, I'm up. not saying I didn't struggle with him, because I struggled with him. I just I just gave up. I, I just grabbed Izanagi, you know, I'll count me pick, bro. Anyways, but... For Tabba. Uh, they're... Yeah. The main puzzles for this... Uh, the one... The first one that comes into mind... Is obviously the uh, what are those? They're like slider puzzles, kind of, where you take the yeah. <clears throat> the image is preset, but you have to rotate the tiles to match how the image faces. And every time uh, you move the puzzle piece to the left or the right, the puzzle piece that was to that piece is already left or right replaces where that piece was. Yeah, so it's. <clears throat> it's a bit of, it's a bit of a headache until you really figure out what what's going on and then you're like, oh okay, I just move this here, this, 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 this. Yeah, to be fair though, those those puzzles to me this is this is coming from someone who used to like to do like jigsaw puzzles. because uh, that's kinda what these are to a degree. Yeah. I've always found them easy. Just just because you should oh, always do they were... you should always do like the uh, the outside of the puzzles first, then do the inside pieces, but I don't remember there being that many pieces to these. To where it could just be do the outside first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the the puzzle that I think of first is actually is that uh, stupid. Uh, it's kind of like when you're at the coffins. Or oh yeah, coffins. you gotta match you got... the the one zero zero one zero. Yeah, the and... binary puzzle. Yeah. I'm just... That wasn't too oh. bad though. All you gotta do is just leave the ones on, and then the zeros turn them off. 
yeah, well, it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> I didn't remember. I didn't remember that. Like I knew it was there, but I didn't remember the solution to that puzzle in <clears throat> uh, Vanilla Five. So I, I kept going through, and I'm just like, "Fuck this guide." Uh, the only reason I look, I'm going to defend myself here. The only reason I used a guide in Royal is because I already went through most of this shit. No, to, I feel. To be fair, though, I feel. I, beat, I feel like I have the right. I beat Futaba's Palace in P5 my last time, and I had just played it before playing Royal, like a week or so before playing, like before Royal even came out. So I already had a little bit of the knowledge there, but even then. I didn't remember, I like, the uh, the coffin puzzle never really came to mind. It was the uh, it was the moving piece puzzles that came to mind when I thought of her palace. <clears throat> I, guess, I guess it's because I had trouble with I had trouble with the binary puzzle. I was just like, yeah, this one's kind of ingrained in my memory. Yeah. Uh, then the so... other like the other I guess I could quote unquote puzzles were. Uh, those Anubis statues where you had to take the orbs and then put them in the corresponding statue at the end of the hallway, basically, and go through various enemies. But those aren't really puzzles, though. The only one that's a puzzle is just the one where you don't take the orb. <laughs> yeah. So Otherwise, suffices. her, her pals is fairly straightforward for the most part. Which is uh, which, which is ironic, and it's considering it's all a, it's actually Egyptian. longer than it seems too. Because when you first enter the palace, you do see the entire way straight up to the treasure, like so it doesn't appear long because it's just a huge like the main when you enter the pyramid, it's literally just a straight shot. Then you take an elevator up, and then you go through like another extra bit, and then you just then you're at the treasure. But, yeah, but then Shadow Futaba decides to close the entire thing off to you. Yeah, so then you have to so, just take the uh, scenic route, basically. So the yeah. palace does not look long until you finally start doing it. Then it's long. <laughs> so when you when you finally get to the when you finally get to the end of the palace, and you discover her treasure, like all like all times, you have to you know leave the palace and send the calling card but it's a unique situation because this time you've been communicating firsthand with your target so you have to deliver the card to Futaba and you have to specifically tell her hey we need you to read this it won't work if you don't read this yeah make sure you we read it for fuck's sake it. and then Morgana's like I'll yeah. stay behind and then she reads it, oh. and then he runs out of the room, and she's like, Kitty, yeah. you again, you little fucker. She doesn't, she yeah, doesn't no, say that be, last to part. Be fair, to be fair, that is funny, though. Kitty, you again. <clears throat> that is pretty funny. It is. But, but uh, for the most part, though, um, the, the dungeon itself, it's, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Yeah. I didn't really have to go out of my way to find any of the will seeds, either. I actually, um, I wouldn't say I had to go out of my way for it. I just, I had to do it on the last day because I missed one. Like I said, uh, the, uh, the will seeds are pretty much in places where you couldn't get to vanilla. Like, you just use your grappling hook for probably 70 or 80% of them. Yeah, I, like I said, I just missed one. I happened to miss a room, and I was like, um... So, like, I figured out, because Morgana gives you that stupid fucking, that stupid fucking thing. Like, I mean, well, you can look for the will seeds if you want, but we really should be going up to fight the boss. Like, they did that. I remember them specifically doing that in the last palace. I'm like, oh, they did that. They yeah, they did that in every like. If you if you go in on the day of the calling card, Morgana will say like. So I see you're missing a will see. Oh, I mean, really? Because I never waited yeah. until the the day I sent the calling card to get it, so I never noticed. Well, like I said, I I, I missed it, and yeah, like I sent the calling card, and I'm like, shit, I didn't even notice that I missed it, because <laughs> Morgana gave me that warning. I'm like, oh, fuck. 
Yeah, just ignore the giant glowing skulls on the bottom left side of the map. Room, and I was like, I'm just going around, just going around the thing. I just missed a room. So I just went back to that room. Really was it the quick, room with the balls in it? The giant balls? I think that was actually the room, yeah. Because uh, I remember I, I didn't have to go out of my way. But I remember looking back in the room and I saw that and I'm like, can I go up there? And sure enough, I could because you have to use your grappling hook to get up there. Yeah, I, I think that I'm pretty sure that was the one that I missed because I was just going, going, going on the balls and I wasn't paying attention enough to my surrounding. And I was like, OK, so I went. So I looked up. A, I looked up a quick guide real quick because I was on the last day. I was like, okay, I missed a will see. Where did I miss? It? I think that one was the only one. I think in the game Morgana doesn't even tell you about because he tells you when you're next to one. Yeah, I I think that also helped me not figure it out. Oh. Oh what? Oh, he just says oh, oh every time. That's just his dumb generic oh. line. Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, I hate that laugh. So, well, don't get the perma pick then. Futaba, Futaba, Futaba's palace, and on another subversion, because up to this point, you've been fighting the shadow version of your targets: Shadow Kamashita, Shadow uh, Matarame. Shadow Kaneshiro. Yep. You don't fight Shadow Futaba. Shadow Futaba has nothing against you. No. Shadow Futaba is not trying to eliminate you. You have to fight the harlot the... version of her mother. Yeah, you have to fight what the co what the cognitive world has the cognitive world has created this false vision of her mother that has been implanted into Futaba's memory that she was always angry and she blames her for her death and blah 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 and oh my god does it love to say the word Futaba Futaba I mean there is one point where I think it says it like eight times in a row in the same text box I mean I think I think and it screams it too I think so. Now that you say that, like, so I just remember her doing that. I'm like, please stop. I I ended up skipping the text box because by the time she said it the third time, I'm like, please stop. So you <clears throat> actually are having a lot of trouble fighting her because she's flying up in the air and thus renders most of your attacks except for magic spells and uh, guns. Boot. Yeah, and guns. Uh, Man, I wonder what would happen if we had the uh, down shot by now. <laughs> would she just crash into the sand and the fight would just be over? Uh, God, I don't even know. Honestly. Man, Joker would have some really good accuracy doing all those flips and shit and shooting accurately at her. <laughs> so, you, obvi you, you need some kind of help. And who better to help you in Futaba Sakura's palace... Then Futaba Sakura. Exactly. She enters her own palace. Somehow. Even though she shouldn't. I don't know how she did it. She she ended up getting the MetaNav app on her phone. Yeah, but how did she discover how to get into her palace? Because she used it. She used the app. She's like, Futaba Sakura, the Futaba Sakura at Sojiro's house. And, um, tomb. Oh, right. That is what happened. <laughs> so she's able, to, she's able to just get in no problem whatsoever. Hell yeah. But you shouldn't and, do that. Because there's no telling yeah, what you, could happen with your psyche if you're in there while yeah. shit's going down. Luckily, she was okay. Yes. So she awakens to her persona. Which isn't an attack persona. You don't actually use her on the It's a tentacle persona. It is a support persona. It is a giant fucking UFO. With tentacles. Uh, the Necronomicon. They really wanted to show emphasis on the tentacles. 
when they first showed it off. Oh my god, it's, they wanted to show that off. It's Japan. What were you expecting? I know. So Futaba uses her new persona powers to uh, create, I mean, to signal... She makes a ballista. Uh, yeah, she makes she makes a ballista because she figures out, hey, this is my world. I can do whatever I want. Hell yeah, it is. And she uses her support to basically help you through the fight by telling you, hey, what can work, what can't work. Yeah, and when attacks are coming that when, you can't see, like when the fucking yeah. beast flies upward in the air and it stays up there for like ten turns in a row and you're just waiting for it to now, come down. Now there is actually a uh, fucked up thing that um, I think during the fight, uh, Monster Monster Wakaba, that's Futaba's mother's name. Monster, Monster Wakaba. Wakaba. Yeah, yeah her, <laughs> her, her full title, Monster Wakaba. Uh, she asks you something about like I'm just gonna like paraphrase like Futaba's not a good person or something along those lines and you genuinely have the option to answer yes or no and if you answer if you answer in agreement to her statement that will actually affect the ballista and it will take and it will take twice as long to really be able to use the ballista why did how do you know that did you actually do that no, I learned it on uh, TV Tropes. Oh. Uh, I think I think it was Developer's Foresight. Mm. Because, yeah, I because did not know that because I answered the opposite of how she wanted. So Because it affects her psyche. And oh, she's yeah. like, well, well, damn, that's what you really think of me? God, that poor so, child. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah poor Futaba. And, and I mean that genuinely. She she is the kind of character that you meet in almost every Persona game, where you just want to give her a hug. Who's the like, one in three? Uh, Maiko, the ten year old girl. Her parents are going through a divorce. Oh, I and wouldn't know that character because I don't think that character's in the main cast. Well, yeah, she's not in the main cast. She's one of your social link. Exactly, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, I mean, but yeah, like I said, like she she's that kind of character where you just want to give her a hug and tell her everything will be all right. Yeah. The same the same thing with uh, Saki Kanishi's brother. He he's a he's he's a fucking asshole at the start, but he's he's upset that his sister's dead. My sister is dead. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like he's an ass he's an asshole about it, but you really can understand how it, how it hurt how hurt he really is so i think he's that kind of character where you just want to give him a hug i'm and just tell him everything's all right i'm just thinking of that stupid yeah. high i'm daisy dub i mean it's the best it, it's the best thing to ever come out of persona 4 <laughs> it's the best dub <laughs> but we don't want to side trip we don't want to side with just constant quoting of the greatest comic in history no i suppose not Maybe we can do that later. Maybe. So, Futaba is able to help you take down her fake mother, her monster mother, and is able to come to terms with the fact that she was not the one responsible. And she actually is able to meet the spirit of her dead mother one more time in another heart wrenching scene that kind of makes you want to cry. Yeah. Because her mother uses the force well, and comes back. She, well, she's straight. She straight up goes up to hug her, hug her, and talk about how much she missed her and how she wants her back. And she's like, "Nah, and, bitch, don't touch me." Yeah, no. Her mother literally says, "Futaba, you're being selfish. Don't touch me. No, don't touch me. Horrible shit might happen. Don't be selfish, child." And that was uh, Palace Four. Oh, uh, but you Futaba. didn't say you didn't say what the treasure was. 
I don't remember what the treasure was. The treasure was Futaba herself. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Actually, yeah, Futaba was the treasure of that palace. Because her, her new and improved self is treasure. So, but, s- since we've completed Futaba's palace, what well, happens yeah, he, What happens after that, though? Uh, Futaba falls into a deep coma. It's not even like a coma, it's just more like a big sleep. That's what a coma is. But in a coma, you're probably not going to wake up. Some people wake up from comas. Most, some people, not most people, I was about to say most people, but some people do. Uh, but... So Futaba's one of those some people. She wasn't in a coma, though. Dude, dude Drew, depending on how fast you finish that palace, she can be in a she can be in a, in a deep sleep for like 18 days. Yeah. <laughs> 18 days of pure sleeping. She doesn't wake up once. That's a coma. Nah, dog. Yes, dog. That's a coma. Nah, dog. Here's, like... Surely she got up at some point to piss. I don't know about that. (laughs) I mean, I don't think I could lay in bed for 18 days straight without at least getting up to take a piss. I don't know. I'm aware you don't know. The game just kept saying you have to wait for Futaba to recover and wake up. So she's not in a coma, she's just asleep, so therefore... She's asleep, and we don't need to clarify on this any more of what she's actually in, because that part does not matter. Okay, fine. She's asleep for, like, <laughs> 18 days. <laughs> and so, so Jiro's dumbass just sits there, and he's like, oh yeah, this happened, this happened sometimes. <clears throat> she just exerted herself too much. Yeah, thanks for your uh, insert there, Lubu. So, with that, we've completed Palace 4 of the game, and I don't know if there's much else to really say. There is, this, because we're not going to remember that when we come back. So, what ends up happening is she sleeps for a bajillion days, and then she wakes up, and then she's they're like, yo, um, Medjed dog, and she's like, oh, okay, and she does the thing and gets rid of Medjed. You also find out she was the original Medjed. Yes, and not only that, but when you find out that she's the original Medjed, she just kind of falls asleep again. And then, after that, she's like, yeah, the, the guy that was running that was just kind of an idiot. All this tech, all those, all this techie stuff that I understand. So, at the end of the day, Medjed really wasn't, like, as big of a threat as they made it sound, even though the game implies if you lose against her palace, like you lose all the time, that Medjed gets you arrested, even though they're not really as hot shit as they make themselves sound. Well, remember, I mean, they have they have to have some kind of they have to have some kind of bad ending if you're not able to do it. So I know. The bad ending's gonna be the bad ending is basically uh, the bad ending I, should have just honestly and as much as I hate to say it is Futaba should just commit suicide. <laughs> that should just be that should just be it. Then the Phantom Thieves can't continue because they can't shut down Medjet and the Medjet gives them a bad reputation because the Phantom Thieves can live up to what they needed. You know what? That actually sound that actually does sound fairly good. Not good as in, like, oh, yeah, that's great, but good as in, like, that, that's pretty good storytelling. Yeah, like, they they could have they could have made it to where it still could have... Because Futaba's literally like, yeah, that guy really wasn't shit. Like, he was just... He was, a, he was just... Stupid. <laughs> well, I'm not sure... I'm not sure if there's anything else to discuss in this session. Uh, we've... I don't we've... think so, because after that, they start going towards the next palace once they take care of the whole med jed thing yeah and we're gonna we're gonna well i guess we can still keep going about the school trip if you want we we have a lot Uh, we have what school trip no they don't take the school trip they go to the beach after this they're trying to help futaba uh get more used to uh being out in public and around other people 
I, I mean, yeah, that, that's a that's a cute game, but there's not really much to really talk about. Yusuke buys crabs. <clears throat> yeah, monsters. and then Futaba's like, yo, dog, give me those. Yusuke is just not very smart with money. <laughs> not really. He, he only really seems to buy art supplies or things that inspire him. Which, yeah, to be fair, he... I guess if you're an artist and things inspire you that easily... I, I guess, you know, that kind yeah, of is then, a good use of the money. He, but then he complains about how he's not sure if he'll be able to eat. <laughs> or have somewhere to sleep. Yeah, so <laughs> that's his fault. All of those memes of uh, Yakuza. Uh, I literally was about to say Yakuza. Uh, Yusuke. Just, my, fa my favorite character, Yakuza. Yeah, my favorite character, Yakuza. Uh Yusuke laying in bed with Joker that night he stays the night with Joker. <laughs> and he's like, he's wondering, he's like having like daydreams about crabs and he's like, I wonder, uh, God, what the fuck? It's been so long since I've seen some of those. Uh, I wonder what the crabs would do if they didn't have claws or like he'd be like thinking too hard about it basically. Like what would crabs do if they didn't have their claws? <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, Mama Mia is just kind of like fine. staring at him with like a death stare and being like, "Go to sleep." <laughs> For the love of God, please, Yusuke. <laughs> Go to sleep, you bastard. Do you remember all those months ago we had the Papa melting pot? Yusuke, please. For the love of God, it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I have school in like three hours.